where you want it. Bay 12, please. Hello there Transformers fans and welcome back to another Bay 12 video review. Today we are reviewing the last of the Amazon exclusive IDW comic character releases. This is the final two pack featuring Javelin and Cascade. Here they are in the packaging. You've got some really cool close up versus art. I like how they did the split down the middle. On the side, you got a little bit more of Cascade. And on this side, you've got that Legacy Evolution banner artwork. And then on the back, you've got images of both figures with their rifle accessories. And that's pretty much it for the packaging. And here they are out of the box, and they both look really cool. Now, real quick, just to preface this, uh, once again, they're not completely entirely accurate to how they appear in the comics they're really close the robot modes especially are really close now cascade here has a lot of extra kibble here due to the alt mode that they went with for her they went with the siege chromia alt mode which to be fair we never really see cascade transform in the idw comics because she only appeared in the universe that went from 2019 to 2022 so we didn't actually get to see her alt mode. So as far as we know, she's pretty fairly accurate, at least in robot mode, just kind of with the extra bits here. But Javelin here is also really close. Her robot mode is actually very accurate. Her alt mode has a little bit of inaccuracy to it, but I do think that going with the studio series Bumblebee movie RC mold for Javelin was a good choice and just having picked an existing mold to turn into Javelin which had such a unique character design that comic book universe is also to my knowledge her only character appearance so far. I believe they chose the best design possible, honestly. And the inaccuracies are mostly in her alt mode, like I said, but it's really not that inaccurate. But we'll cover that when we get to alt mode. Anyway, we'll go ahead and start off with Cascade here. She's looking pretty good. I really like that face sculpt a lot. Much like Shadow Striker, she's got that cyborg looking eye, which she had in the comics. She comes with a similar blaster pistol that the chromia figure came with you've even got the extended barrel piece which we have as a scope here because the cascade figure comes with this extra couple bits of extended barrel pieces which you can use to make into a larger rifle for her she also comes with the little grenade bits which you can plug into the side or add to her weapon or put in her hands whichever she is fully articulated head is on a ball joint Fully articulated shoulders, upper bicep, single jointed elbows, wrists go in and out due to transformation. You have a little bit of waist mobility, but it is hindered by this crotch piece right here, which was very strange with this design because the whole waist articulates for transformation. So it's weird that they made it to where you can't articulate the waist section below this joint where it transforms very much so yeah it, that's always been kind of a complaint about this mold i've had just it carried over to cascade unfortunately fully articulated hips upper thigh single jointed knees ankle joints side ankle joints and that's pretty much it for cascade's articulation for comparison here she is next to siege chromia so you can see the two side by side and see how they compare not my favorite release of Chromia either. I'm still kind of hoping that we get a more G1 accurate Chromia at some point in the future, much like we did with Alita 1 fairly recently, and hopefully, maybe, Hasbro will do the rest of Alita 1's team from Generation 1. I know we got them already for the Alita 1 combiner from Power of the Primes, but I also would like a more Generation 1 accurate set to go with my generation one collection transformation for cascade is fairly simple we're going to start by removing all of her weapon accessories first 
Next, we're gonna come over here down to the legs. We're gonna go ahead and fold these feet back and then they peg together right there at the heel and then rotate these little fender sections straight down all the way like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to untab these fender sections, releasing this backpack section. And then on this double hinge joint, we're going to extend that down. We're going to unfold the top of the alt mode there from inside and then just bring that all the way down over the legs and it looks like the feet came undone a little bit on us that's okay because we're just going to get them all up here and then these fender sections are going to tab in to the backpack section there and there is the front of the car pretty much all the way done next up what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that waist that was that joint i was talking about earlier and then we're going to grab the head we're going to tilt it back and then we're going to rotate this whole section and the reason you want to tilt it back is because of this crest here on her forehead it kind of pokes up a little bit too high so if you don't tilt it back you're not going to get enough clearance to fully rotate the head into the back cavity of the figure like so and then it'll click into place you'll have this peg up here which we will be able to put her weapon on next we're going to rotate these shoulders up a little bit and then rotate these legs all the way into place and then just fit the shoulders and fit the arms to finish the back of the car section fold the hands in and there she is in her little Cybertronian car mode which once again we did not see in the comics but here's probably the other reason why they chose the Siege Chromium mold for Cascade and that is because when the 2019 IDW universe started, it started in parallel with the Siege toy line. So, much like the Siege cartoon, the comic based a lot of its character designs on figures from the Siege toy line and a lot of other figures from other Transformers universes and series as well, which was actually really cool. So, that's the other reason they most likely that in conjunction with the fact that once again we never saw her alt mode in the comic at least not to my knowledge that they likely chose that because based off of her silhouette in the comic it's probably one of the closest and most logical conclusions you can draw of well she probably turned into some kind of cybertronian car so just using the siege chromia mold made the most sense and you can add her weapons to her alt mode like i said so we can tab her rifle here on the back we'll go ahead and put that little scope bit back on the top because why not and then we can take her little detonators here and we can just find different spots to plug them in like up here for example if you like or they plug directly back here on the back of her alt mode so she's all armed up and ready to drive into battle and real quick for comparison here she is next to chromia in her alt mode so you can see the two side by side in their cybertronian vehicle modes next up we have javelin one of the younger recruits of the autobot senate guard her job was to work with the main autobot security force under ironhide she were also, I believe, worked with Chromia in the comics and Strongarm and a few other awesome Autobot characters. There were a lot of really cool characters and a lot of really cool Fembots in the 2019 IDW comics. And once again, this year has also been a fantastic year for Transformer Fembot characters because we've gotten so many awesome Fembot characters this year that have just never either gotten a toy release before or haven't gotten a toy release as good as they have this year. So Hasbro has really been on point with the Fembots. I hope the Lady Transformer fans are as excited as we are because it's so nice to finally have characters other than RC and Black Arachne in our collections. She is also fully articulated, head is on a ball joint, fully articulated shoulders, upper bicep, double jointed elbows, mostly due to transformation, but hey, they're still there. 
in and out on the wrist. Same wrist articulation as Cascade, ironically enough. She actually does have waist articulation, hips, upper thigh, single jointed knee. You also have this forward and back ankle joint and this side to side ankle joint. She also comes with her signature rifle that she had the, in the comics, which also disassembles. You can take off the scope. You can take off this barrel extension piece, but this is the whole thing as appeared in the comics. Really the only thing this is missing is the little kickstand for it that she used when she was in her sniping position. But other than that, this was very cool. And they absolutely nailed that face sculpt. It is so, so good. The face sculpts on both of these figures are absolutely perfect in my opinion. Very, very comic book accurate. And real quick for comparison, here is Javelin next to the Studio Series Bumblebee RC figure that she was remolded from. And you can see pretty much everything they remolded. Pretty much the upper torso section is the bulk of where the remolding went. Um, aside from the arms, from the waist up, she's a completely different figure. The chest is totally different. The wing sections are totally different. The backpack, the cockpit or driver's section of the alt mode is completely different. And then of course, an entirely new head sculpt as well. But I'm so glad that we got another figure out of this mold because this is my number one favorite RC figure of all time. And just like with that RC figure, transformation is fairly simple and straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to collapse these sections and make sure these legs are straightened out. Then we're going to rotate this ankle joint all the way to the side, push out on that wheel section, and then rotate all the way around, push that back in, and face that forward, and there's one of the wheels done, do the same thing over here, rotate that around, collapse that in, bring that up, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to peg these legs together at these two center wheels, like so. Next, we're going to bring open these wing sections, we're going to pull on this whole backpack section, extending all of this, and then as we do that, we're going to bring that collar section up, fold that down, click those two sections into place, and then on that double hinge joint, we're going to fold that head under, and then we're going to collapse that little section right there, rotate this waist all the way around, bring these shoulders down so they're facing at a 90 degree angle, and then on that upper elbow joint, we're going to bend those elbows also at a 90 degree angle and then we're going to bring this section down these thighs are going to tab in to this section right here and then this is just going to tab into the shins next we're going to bring these wing sections back bring that backpack section up bring those arms all the way down and then this is going to tab in to the thigh and the side of the elbow, securing all of that into place, fold the hands in, also just like with Cascade, oddly enough, and there she is in her full proper transformation, which this is where she's not entirely comic book accurate. It's close. It's actually really close, a lot closer than, say, the Nova Prime figure from this set and the Orion packs. Still, those are the two most inaccurate figures in the IDW comic line that was on Amazon for Legacy Evolution this year by a mile. She has her own fair amount of inaccuracies in alt mode, specifically with the wheels, but it's still, overall, the design way closer, way closer than Nova Prime and Orion Pax. So... What you want to do is you don't want to quite complete this, and you'll, you'll see what I mean here in a moment. Split the wheels here in the middle. You can still leave the thighs tabbed in, so the overall figure is still relatively secure and put together, but you can use that articulation to your advantage because in the comic design that you'll look at right here, 
you'll notice the wheels are not connected in the center, but they're actually over here to the side. Now, like this, this is a little bit more accurate. I know they're supposed to fit, sit out a little bit wider apart, but this is as close as you can get while still keeping the alt mode together. And then the other inaccuracy, as you can see in the image right here, is she doesn't have the larger center wheel coming out of the back. And that's the only other major inaccuracy with this, with this figure release. It's really close. It's, it's really, really close. And it would have been nice if we got a little bit of extra molding or just another extra accessory maybe that could peg on or unpeg to be like a shield or something or um, maybe like some kind of spinning saw blade weapon or something like that, you know, that you can put on the side of her arm or, or that her arms can hold on to here in the center to give her that big central wheel look. But as far as inaccuracy goes, she's not that far off. And just like in the comic here, you can mount her rifle on top of her alt mode, making her even more comic accurate in alt mode. And real quick for comparison, here is Javelin next to RC, the mold that she was based off of. So you can see the two of their designs side by side. Still love this alt mode so much. It's such a cool looking alt mode design. And here she is next to Cascade. So you can see the two facing off against each other from their opposite teams in their alt modes as well. And the color schemes, I think, complement each other very well. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review featuring the new Transformers Legacy Evolution Cascade and Javelin 2 pack, the final pack out of the Amazon exclusive IDW comic character set of figures and what do you think of these themed set of figures that Hasbro's been doing with these various store exclusives over the past few years? Do you like that they've been splitting off whole sets of groups of characters together and giving them to various stores or do you wish they were just filtered into the main line with everything else? Let us know in the comments and let us know what kind of group of characters or series you would like to see get an exclusive release like these in the future. Stay tuned for more Transformers reviews. Like and subscribe and follow us on social media. Check out our sister website, CoolToyReview.com and like and subscribe to the Cool Toy Review YouTube channel. There's all kinds of awesome toy news reviews and more on Cool Toy Review. If you like Star Wars content, check out RebelScum.com the world's oldest and largest Star Wars fan website not owned by Disney, and there's daily Star Wars toy-related news and content every single day on the main website. And make sure you like and subscribe to the rebelscum.com YouTube channel for all kinds of awesome toy reviews and other Star Wars video-related content. If you're looking for some more Transformers and some other toys and merch, come visit us in our physical location inside Order 66 Multiverse in the shops at Willoughbyn Mall in Plano, Texas, which also houses Order 66 Toys, the world's official all-collectible Star Wars toy store. And in case you're not local, they go live every single Friday night from the Order 66 Toys Facebook page at 7 p.m. Central Time, and they ship all around the world. And last but not least, sign up for CollectorsOracle.com. Right now, we only have Star Wars toy lines archived, but we are in negotiations with other companies and brands to add more toy lines in the future, and it's all absolutely free, and you can sign up for an account and manage and track your collection as well as mark things that you would like to have in your collection. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. Transform and roll out. Game over, man. Game over.